I'm so motivated. And by October, I'm still so motivated. And by November, it's like, ugh. Why do they need to eat? Seriously, isn't one meal a day enough? <laughs> everyone welcome back to my channel Tina here today I am making the first of what is going to be a series of videos about getting yourself ready for back to school your children back to ready to school teachers getting ready for back to school uh, everybody so I have I have a lot of videos coming up all on this whole back to school idea and today's video I am going to tackle back to school for parents and kids. So I have a very long list here of things that I want to talk about and share with you guys today. So let's go ahead and jump right in. The first strategy I'm going to share with you guys for back to school is to get those sleeping and waking up routines back into place. And I earlier, the sooner the better. Um, I'm not saying like the whole last month before going back to school you have to go to bed at your bedtime and wake up at a set time but honestly about two full weeks before the beginning of the school year I do recommend you know little by little adjusting those clocks in your house so that by the time the children go back to school for at least one week already you've been waking up at the right time for the morning and you've been going to bed at the right time for the morning because I don't know about you guys but for me and my kids it takes us a while to adjust to get back into that routine the second one I want to suggest for you guys is to get the kids reading a lot of people just let things slide come the summer I'm guilty of it myself but you kind of want to get your children back into that thinking frame of mind. So now is the perfect time to get your family in the car, drive down to the library, let your children pick out several books to read. If they're reading chapter books and every day you should have them reading about 20 to 30 minutes from a chapter book by themselves. If you have smaller children, then now is the time to go pick out some picture books and sit with them and have them read to you or you read to them. Get those bedtime stories kicking again because you really want your children to have a school frame of mind as opposed to going back to school and their heads are still on summer vacation. Because with the new standards and curriculums being set in place by the state, gone are the days where like the first two weeks of school was a slow introduction back into the studies. Oh no, not anymore. Now because of the new rigorous standards, you have like two days to work yourself back into a routine by the third day we're teaching content we really are and some of us I know are teaching content on the first and second day so kids they kind of have to be ready to go on that first day and hit the ground running uh, another thing to get kids motivated and excited for back to school take the kids with you when you go shopping for their school supplies um, let them pack out the backpack of their choice. Let them select whatever lunchbox they want. Let them pick out even down to the little things like their folders and notebooks. And I just took my own boys shopping about a week ago and you know, basically said, this is how much we got to spend. Pick out what you need, pick out what you want. Obviously you're gonna you know, set a budget for these things, but the children will have a more vested interest if they're part of the shopping process of choosing their supplies and getting all excited and pumped back to go. Number four, review your house rules for screen time. Um, I know during summer vacation it's real easy to just say go play video games or go watch a movie or do this, but during the school year you, you want to really put hard limits on how much time they're spending in front of a screen because you want to make sure there's lots of time for studying, lots of time for outside activities and family time. So if your kids right now are playing, you know, 20 hours of video games a week, you might want to start curtailing that and pulling back a little bit and so that they're down to, you know, like that 45 minutes a day rule that you have in place during the school year. Okay. Number five 
create a homework station in your house. Uh, figure out now where are the kids going to do their homework. For myself, the kids, we just do it right at the kitchen counter. We have a, one of those breakfast bars in our kitchen with some stools. So as soon as the kids come home, they sit down in the stool. Well, actually, when they first come home, they get about 15 minutes to unwind. Have a snack, unwind, chill out for a little bit, but then it's to the homework. I've learned with my boys, it is better to do homework immediately as opposed to letting them go outside and play first. And I understand in September when the days are still warm and sunny, it's real tempting to let them go outside and play for several hours and then bring them in to do homework. But in my own personal experience, by the time they come in in the evening, they just, they're done. They're checked out. Now they just want to veg out on the couch in front of the TV set before going to bed. So figure out when and where homework's going to be done. And so often in my own experience with my own classroom, parents will buy some school supplies for their kids to send into school. But one of the best things that you can have at your house is a basket, just a simple basket or even a Tupperware that houses crayons, markers, ink pens, erasers, uh, the different things children need to do their homework. You know, cutting, gluing, scissors. This is, especially in the younger grades, this is part of the homework process. So have a, a nice little basket stock full of supplies to get them through the school year. Number six, now is the time to take an inventory of your children's wardrobe. I'm actually in the process of doing this right now. Uh, yesterday I spent time in both boys' closets pulling out things that were too small. Now they need to be donated to the younger cousins or sent off to charity. Things that my boys had completely obliterated like blue jeans and sweatpants and tennis shoes were deposited into the trash. And in the next couple of coming upcoming days, I need to basically count how many shirts do they have? How many pairs of pants do they have? Um, you know, do they need more socks and underwear? And then I will be writing out a shopping list. And we have a variety of outlet stores. I mean, they're, granted, the store is about an hour away, but a couple of like my favorite outlet stores are Kid Gap, um, Oshkosh. You can get some amazing deals in those outlet stores. And I will be taking my shopping list with me and replacing all the items my boys will need for the upcoming school year. And the boys obviously get to go with me and they have a say on what does and doesn't get bought. But I do put a limit on, you know, I don't let them go crazy. You know, money does not grow on trees. Maybe made out of trees, but it does not grow on trees. And so, yes, they have to be told no sometimes that, no, you're just not getting this. Number seven, if you have high school kids. AJ is in high school and this has become a real issue for us and something I'm actually working on tackling this year. And that is how are you going to create like a file system for all of their papers? One of the things you realize with high school is that you have midterms and final exams and so in, in elementary and middle school once you're done with something you can chuck it. In high school you don't chuck anything because everything is notes. Everything is a worksheet you may need to reference two months from now, three months from now. And so for of the longest time, AJ's backpack was weighing like 50 pounds. And I went into his folders and I figured out why. It's because he's keeping every single sheet of paper, which I understand and I agree, you, you kind of need to. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that every single sheet of paper from all six or seven subjects has to be in his backpack at all times. So one of the things I'm doing this year for AJ is I'm buying a second set of folders for him. One for every subject that he has. And then in that second set of folders are going to go the extra papers. So like once a month, I'm going to have him go through his folders, pick out the papers that he has to have right now. But anything that's from a unit that they've already completed 
will get placed into that second folder that's just going to stay in his bedroom. He has one shelf in his closet that I'm going to dedicate to all of his school papers this year. And this way, he's not going to be walking around by December with a 50-pound backpack anymore because he's literally carrying, you know, 500 sheets of paper on top of all of his books, right? Number eight is to plan for food preparation. Um, right now is a great time to go on Pinterest or Google and start finding all kinds of lunch ideas. I don't know about you guys, but I hate packing lunches. I, it, I, I do, you know, and I always start in September, I'm so motivated. And by October, I'm still so motivated. And by November, it's like, oh, why do they need to eat? Seriously, isn't one meal a day enough? <laughs> because you just, you get sick to death of packing lunches. So I've spent a lot of the summer meal planning for going back to work next year. Now is the time to start sitting down and finding all kinds of lunch meal planning on Pinterest and YouTube and different channels, different places. So this way, come December, when you're just like, I don't know what to pack for those lunches anymore, you can have something to reference and go, oh, okay. I can make this. <laughs> um, anything you can do now to make that going back to school process, and I'm not even just talking about September back to school process. I'm talking about making it easier for December, for March and April, when you start to really just find things getting monotonous and bogged down in things. So anything you can do now in summer will just make your school year that much easier. Also, now is a good time to start buying these food light items because they are not cheap. You know, um, granola bars, applesauce containers, uh, those go-go squeezes that Casey loves. I mean, these things are not cheap. They're very expensive. And so I like to buy things in bulk from Costco when I can. And one of the great things about Costco is the expiration dates are usually pretty amazing. So you can buy a box of go-go squeeze applesauce pouches right now and the expiration date on them are probably for like they're good for like the next 18 months. So now is the time to start buying a box here, buy a box of granola bars and just start tucking these things away so this way you're not hit you know the week before school starts with you know a $200 grocery shopping bill because all that stuff costs a lot of money. Number nine, now is the time for those well child checkups. You need to get this week actually. Uh, today, later today, my boys and myself, we are all going in for our dental cleaning. Tomorrow, AJ and Casey are going to the pediatrician for their well child checkups and physicals. AJ will have an EKG to make sure he's got a good heart for any sports or gym activities he has. Uh, they'll both be getting any vaccinations they need to have done. Um, yes, get those scheduled. And I like to do those while in the middle of summer as opposed to waiting till getting closer and closer to the school year. Um, because when you get close to school, you, you already have, as, as teachers at least, we already have so many things going on that it's best to get those things just taken care of early and done. Just get it done. All right, and finally, my 10th suggestion for parents and kids getting ready to go back to school is to create an after-school routine. A routine that includes not just getting homework and dinner done, and of course there are a million activities, but I want you, when you make your after-school routine, to figure out when are your kids going to get downtime? When is the time that your children are going to spend time just being bored? Yes, bored. I realize as a parent that a bored child is a pain in the butt child, <laughs> but honestly, it's when your kids get bored bored that that imagination kicks in it's when they have nothing to do and you won't let them on the electronics that's when they suddenly go outside and they use their imagination and they turn a stick and a rock into something incredible in their own mind i love boredom for kids i really do and in this crazy overscheduled world that we all live in Somewhere along the lines about, oh, 20 years ago, just as I was having AJ, 
developed this concept that kids needed to be actively engaged in some sort of school or sports or musical activity at all times. You know, heaven forbid if they just go to their room and lay on the floor and do something quiet for an hour. Oh no, no, you gotta get them in gymboree, you gotta get them into dance lessons, you need to get them into baseball and soccer and karate. And that's actually not good for kids. Um, in fact, we're kind of seeing this now in this teenage generation of instant gratification. Uh, they can't sit still for a moment. You know, where's the next activity? What's the next thing we're going to do? Please, please let your kids be bored. <laughs> let them have hours with nothing to do except use their own imagination. So as you're creating your you know, back to school schedule and you're trying to work out when this child is going to go to baseball practice and when is this child going to go to their violin lessons and how am I going to get this child to dance class, please somehow in that schedule create a day. You know, maybe it's every Wednesday. No activities are allowed to happen on Wednesday other than doing your homework and having dinner. Wednesday is the day that we will not have any computer time or, you know, video game time. Wednesday is your day to just go outside <laughs> or go in your room and play with your toys. Or that maybe Wednesday is the day that we're going to have family game night and we'll play Monopoly and Clue. So, yes, boredom. It is so important. So there you have my 10 suggestions for parents and kids, small steps that you can start to do now to get ready for back to school, to build that anticipation and excitement in your kids for back to school, and to start taking care of things to get your own routines in place to make going back to school exciting, but not crazy for yourself. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found this video helpful at all, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more from you in the future, click that subscribe button. I'll talk to you guys later.